everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another bonus night for the 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Tonight I'm going to develop and dye a colorway for Wool to Dye For's awesome Donegal multi-nep yarn that comes in both fingering and DK weight. Both weights of yarn are 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Donegal Nep, where the neps are this beautiful pink, green, yellow, and blue. Even though these are both the exact same fiber content, they both have these vibrant uh, speckles that is the Donegal nature to the yarn, there is a difference in how the yarn is spun, and I only discovered this after I started dyeing the DK. The figurine weight yarn is pretty high twist, it is a two ply yarn, but the DK weight has a much loftier twist and is four ply. And so I was very surprised that it didn't have a similar construction to the fingering weight because I guess I expected it to feel a bit more similar with that high twist, which isn't a bad thing, but I wanted to point this out at the beginning of the video because while they are very, very similar, there are differences. <laughs> Because the neps on this yarn are so exciting, I wanted to create a really subtle colorway to let the neps be a star, to complement that magic versus overshadowing it. And so when I started filming this, I didn't really know where I wanted to end up. I knew I wanted to layer a lot of different blue shades, but I didn't know if I wanted to do this hot, if I wanted to do some dip dyeing, and so I decided to prototype and play around with some cool processing techniques first to see how I liked the different colors I wanted to use playing together. All of this is again for my goal of creating something that will complement these beautiful nips instead of competing with them. But anyway, let's go look at the color palette that I have picked out. I'm starting today in my respirator mask because I need to check to see how much dye I have of each of these colors. I know that these two I should have nearly full. The sea spray I've used a bit more, but sea spray is also sold out. And so I want to make sure that I'm going to have enough of the colors to dye the number of skeins that I need to dye. I probably have enough, but I figured let's see and measure out half a gram Oh, that's a whole gram. Approximately of each color. So that way I know, I don't know if I'll use a whole half gram. All right, I think I will likely have enough. Let's see, this is always a consideration. I debated not using sea spray, even though I'm really excited about the combination, but I really, really like the color. Now for indigo, I don't even want half a gram. I want just a little bit because I know I don't want to use a whole half gram. Okay, maybe that's like a tenth of the amount. It's just a little bit. I don't know if I'll need it. We'll see. We're going to just play with these colors and then decide how we might want to modify things. Okay, now I am going to dissolve these colors in an unspecified volume of tap water. This is that indigo blue where you can see we use just like a tiny bit and it is extremely intense. Probably added too much liquid. I'm gonna try to get the powder wet before increasing the volume. But you know, it is what it is. Of course, now I've lost track of which color is which. <laughs> oh dear. We're prototyping, just getting a crude sense. So this is our indigo, this one, Let's see, who are you? Well, I don't know. Okay, this is our sea spray. That I think is our peacock. And this, if it's brighter, yes, this is our baby blue eyes. And so the reason why I picked these three colors is that the sapphire blue and the baby blue eyes actually are different hues from one another. And so I thought it would be really fun to layer them together. So now I am messing around without measuring. I'm going to get around 200 milliliters of color um, and I think I'm going to do, and this is roughly, say like half the sea spray that I mixed and I'm also going to add 10 milliliters of white vinegar to this and I'd like to start 
a little bit of water here on our yarn, but I'm actually gonna bring this up to like almost 400 milliliters. Pour the color on. And so what I am doing is not the same as getting like a perfect tonal because I don't want to wait to do a slow layering of the colors, but also maybe uh, this kind of technique will work as well. But you can see that with the amount of water and acid that we've added, that color struck pretty quickly. And I'm using warm tap water. I want to get a feel for which of these colors strike quickly, which strike slower. And again, about half. And I forget, I think, I think this might be the peacock. So I'm adding it and moving the yarn. And again, actually let's open it up. Again, I'm probably going to do like a tonal layered multiple times kind of effect, but potentially doing it warm rather than cool. And so some of the layers may not be quite as even, but I figured starting light the colors and then potentially adding more like I think I will want more of each of these colors like I don't think that this is enough coverage for what I want but since I did measure the dyes to start oh that's probably a little more than half but since I did measure the dyes to start at least I know a maximum that we would need but so far with acid all of these colors are striking pretty quickly and so that is really really good and maybe means that who knows maybe I will do something more similar to this after all so this color is gorgeous so far it is definitely uh, not as pigmented as what I want uh, let's go ahead we're gonna keep going and doing this with the rest of these colors. I am going to wait and do the rest of the sea spray more towards the end, given that that is the color I am the most uh, concerned about having enough of it. Uh, it's always hard to know how much of colors you have, but So now we're starting to see more color in here. I might actually add one, two, three, four, a bit more acid because if things start, I mean, a lot of the color has struck to the yarn. I know there's like a little side in the way, but a lot of the color has struck here already. Awesome, which makes my life a bit easier. I know I like these three colors together, so that was never a question for me. The question that I had was how, what proportion when I layer them this kind of way, and what kind of blue will I create? But actually, for all that this wasn't the way I was planning on applying the colors, I think I might actually apply it this way, just using more skeins at a time because I am really, really enjoying this color. Ooh, this is really pretty, really, really pretty. And I think that those multicolored neps will show up really, really well on this kind of blue. Ooh, but I'm debating, okay. Before I add the sea spray, let's add this indigo, which again, isn't very much color, um, but is a bit less bright than the peacock 
and the baby blue eyes. And so having just like a hint of that could add a little bit of depth to the color that is really, really nice. I love, love how soft these tonal shifts are and I'm also really enjoying the hand manipulation of this colorway. Hmm, okay, so I like it here, but let's, let's do this and add the sea spray to the rest of the water. Let's do it. Sea spray is such a beautiful color. It is bluish, but it also is a little bit more green than the others. And so let's see how I feel. Yeah, I think that this, which gives it, oh, I think that I really like where this is going and I'm okay if we see more individual hues um, coming out as well. I am gonna quickly rinse out the rest of those containers so we can combine the rest of the dye on the yarn and then I'll give you a close up of the yarn. All right, on the monitor, I would say that the some of the more teal undertones aren't coming through at all, but here is this leftover color. And I am going to let this yarn sit here um, for a little bit. We will go ahead and add it to a dye pot to heat up um, shortly, but I really, really like where we ended up. Yeah, I'm struggling to capture the exact blue that we have here. The difference between these colors that we're layering is extremely subtle but I really, really like it. So whether I hand massage the color in like this or I layer the color in stages, which I think was my original plan, the colors work together in such a pretty way that I think I'm really happy with this depth of color. So I'm now just adding everything to my dedicated dye pot, my stainless steel dye pot. And, oh my gosh, things are so close to being clear already, but I am gonna go ahead and heat this on the stove for 30 minutes. It is super, super steamy, but I am now going to turn off the heat. And while well, things were pretty much clear before we even started, but I am going to let this cool off so we can wash it. Yeah, I'm now really, really enjoying this effect I got from pouring the colors on and sort of moving it through and getting that layered effect, but really, really soft because I had real control over where I placed the colors and I can move the yarn so I could interact with the lightest areas really, really easily. And yeah, I think that this might be the way I decide to layer the colors. Obviously, there will be some differences, but I like that softness and that control that I had there, and the colorway has richness and depth to it, but is still subtle enough that it can let these neps, these bright neps, really, really shine. I am curious if the blue neps will show through. I feel like when I did the celebration colorway, uh, there may have been one color that didn't show through as strongly. No, actually when I did the purple you can still see all the different colors. There's a chance that maybe the blue won't pop as much because we have a blue here, but I still think that it'll look really, really beautiful and I'm really, really excited. Another thing that's worth pointing out is sometimes when you're gonna go and dye some yarn, you have a vision and you have a goal and a sense of how you may want to create what it is you're gonna create. But then once you go and start playing around and prototyping and thinking about proportions and things like that, you realize that you're gonna shift your original plan and that's okay. <laughs> We're still layering all these different blues together to create this unique hue and I'm really, really excited and I hope you are as well. So now I am going to go ahead and make a lot of 1% stock solutions so that I can dye all of the yarn that I need to dye. 
and a 1% stock solution is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid. And this way I know that I will need 50 milliliters of each of the three main colors, plus I guess if I have a 1% stock of the indigo blue, probably five milliliters of that per 100 grams, and then I can extrapolate that onto the yarn as we dye it. Um, with, who knows, there might be some troubleshooting along the way. <laughs> what I can say with certainty though, when it comes to developing a colorway, that when you are dealing with a certain yarn base, you want to be cognizant of what will really highlight the features of the base. On this yarn that already has these beautiful speckles from the neps, I wouldn't want to do a really speckled colorway because those speckles would draw attention away from the blue, yellow, green, and pink fibers that are mixed into here that make it really, really unique already. And you definitely don't need to stick with, say, a tonal or some kind of semi-solid, but that really does let these beautiful naps really pop, and that's what I'm going for today. Before making big stock solutions, I decided to do a small test on our yarn that has these multicolored naps. So I measured out one and a half grams of the baby blue eyes, sapphire blue, and sea spray, and dissolved them in Again, not very specified volumes of warm tap water. I also took, maybe not exactly 0.15 grams, but I took a little bit of that indigo blue and also dissolved that in water. Of course, wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Okay, since I didn't do this last time, I'm now just a little curious about not just the different hues, but also the relative I guess intensities of the different colors. So our indigo blue is definitely not very intense because I mean it's about, I have, there's one tenth as much dye as the other colors. But um, actually the, the baby blue eyes looks pretty intense, but it is a brighter blue than the peacock blue, which I think is interesting, especially given that the little paint chip has it as a pastel, so I don't know. Um, this is why it's worth swatching, and then our sea spray. But so now let me get a pan out. In my catering steam pan, I have 300 grams of our Donegal yarn, which I am adding to the pan right now. And I have already put in the pan just warm tap water that was one liter of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. So while I just pre-soaked the yarn in plain tap water, there is now some acid in here. But not a ton of water volume yet. That will come as we add the dye. Now I have the yarn a little bit stretched out. Um, it's a little more scrunched up here towards the ties, at least at the moment. And I've got maybe about 800 milliliters of water. And I'm going to add all of my baby blue eyes into this water. So now I would say it's about 900 milliliters because of the addition of that. And what I'm going to do is start adding this color, but it's mostly going to be on this one side. And so I'm pouring it on and moving it through a bit. It's okay if it travels to the other side as well. That is perfectly fine. And I will be lifting and flipping the yarn so we can get some more over here. But you can see it is striking pretty quickly. And don't forget, we're gonna be layering these other colors on as well. But we are just starting with this blue. It's okay for some to go up on the middle. It's okay for some to end up on the other side. The differences between the blues is ultimately extremely, extremely subtle. But this will introduce some more variation 
into the yarn, but again, it's gonna be really, really subtle. So I'm just opening it up, so that way as I continue to layer this color on, we can get more coverage. But because I've got more yarn here in the pan, uh, and so therefore it's a little slower overall, uh, we aren't getting quite the same kind of coverage we did before, but that's also okay. And so now I'm gonna get ready to do the same thing with the sapphire blue. Okay, I'm gonna take all of this dye, one and a half grams of dye, and the nice thing is it's giving us an opportunity to mix things up as well. And I'd say once again, we're between like 850 and 900 milliliters. But this blue is less bright, but also I think is probably more pigmented than the other blue, than the baby blue eyes. And so what we have here is almost a dip dyed effect, but it's not been dip dyed. And actually, I will go ahead and add, okay, I'm using teaspoons, but that's about a tablespoon of water to the rest of the blue. And there's still gonna be lots of color. It's okay, again, if it spreads around the entire thing, that is okay. But the more like liquid we get in here, the easier it's going to be to start to distribute color on to the yarn, even if we have more acid. And I would say things don't feel particularly warm at the moment, uh, but I have been using warm rather than cool uh, tap water. And so now this time there is some acid here in this dye but I am adding more to the one side versus the other. And I'm not sure, yeah, I think you can kind of see the difference in the blues. Um, there's still some light patches up there. Add some more. And again, we can always let things sit a little bit and give it some time. Without heat, that does slow down the rate that things may strike, but it also allows us to really easily manipulate the color through the yarn. And you can see that we have a lot more color all the way through. And while there is some color there, a lot of the color is very, very much in our yarn already, which is great. Yeah, because I think originally I thought I was gonna dip dye the yarn into one blue and then the other, but I liked this hands-on approach and I'm really enjoying it. Still have a little bit of blue left over in here. For the sea spray, I am going to start with just about approximately half um, of the color. And again, we're maybe at about 800 milliliters of liquid. But I'm starting to apply this all over our yarn. And when I flip it, I will intentionally look for light patches um, to help it move through. I'm really not waiting long in between like flips and movement and things like that. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that the this clip, which will be edited out the time that like I am getting water and stuff will be edited out. But I think that the clip is only like at nine minutes, so right now. And so part of the goal here 
as I am moving and opening things. The, there is pretty good color balance, but any lighter patches I did want to bring up uh, to the surface. So that way, I'm gonna stir this up, which I haven't always been doing. So that way when I add this on top, it is hitting some of those areas first. But again, we have enough uh, volume. We have enough volume in here now that A, we're seeing some blue in the pan but also uh, it is easier and easier to add dye all over. All right, I'm gonna add another two tablespoons of white vinegar here in the pan. Where is, here we go. Where are these zip ties? Now, if you're wondering, no idea why one is longer than the others. Oh, maybe because funny, maybe there's different matches, batches from the mill because two of these were from my original set of this color and then one was from a new bag. So interesting. I think that they are different lengths. Um, but you can see that in just this time the water is getting clearer. So what I'm going to do now is remove the liquid from these skeins so that way I can inspect them and see how I'm feeling about the color. See if there's anywhere uh, where we have a little bit more lightness that I might want covered a bit and so as I am looking at the yarn, I'm trying to pay special attention to areas near ties, but also now these skeins are really, really no longer, like the ties have moved and things like that. But we are layering these blues together really nicely. So I am going to take our indigo and fill this up. Again, probably about 800 milliliters. And starting, this color is a lot more diluted than some of the others, but starting and focusing on these lighter patches before moving it a little bit all around. Adding just this final color to our yarn. This is really, really pretty. Again, since there is still some dye in here, you can't really feel uh, all of the multicolored nets yet. Those will pop more, not just once the yarn has been washed, um, but once all of this remaining blue has absorbed to our yarn and there's no harm at this point at coming in with more acid to our pan. I could go ahead and heat this here in this pan, but the reason why I am choosing not to is that when I start scaling this up a bit and doing this um, I don't want the pan to be hot so I can do the next round, but I can, it's easier to on the stove have a pot that is still warm. So what I'm gonna do is take, oh, this is really pretty. I'm not sure if I can tell exactly the section that had more peacock blue. Ooh, that's so pretty from the section that had more baby blue eyes, but I think that doing it that way helped get more variation within the colorways. And now, I'm going to pour. Oh 
man, that just fits. I do have a larger pot than this. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna put this on the stove and heat it for 30 minutes. I am a small batch dyer, which means that I rarely dye more than three to four skeins of one colorway. Sometimes I'll do a colorway on a single skein and might do something that is more labor intensive, but because it's on one skein, it doesn't matter because I'm not trying to scale it. So whenever I'm going and say, trying to dye more like 20 skeins in a colorway, I need to consider uh, how easy it is for me to replicate uh, the techniques and things that I'm doing, but also what works well within the confines of the equipment that I have in my home. And so I feel like that this works pretty well. I have two different pots I can fit on the stove really easily. And I could have some yarn sitting in a pan, actually in both of the pans, waiting for the pots to free up. So I have options. And that means that I should, in an evening, be able to dye most of this, probably. <laughs> if not one evening, then maybe two. As for layering four different blues that are ultimately fairly similar, um, the differences between them are fairly subtle, but is that making a huge difference in the final colorway? Maybe not, but it's fun. <laughs> and no single blue was exactly what I wanted. I mean, maybe it could have been, but I was able to mix and tweak and get the blue that I wanted with some very, very subtle differences that will let these rainbow nips really, really pop and sing. <laughs> Let's wash all of this yarn. I have to say, I am rather impressed that the color feels deeper on our multicolored nets than it does on the scroll. Uh, I know that that yarn base is a little bit darker to start with, but I like the color so much more on the multi net base, and that is exactly what I was going for. And good news, I'm not seeing any bleeding, but we haven't added soap yet. So this is the important check. Now, after I was done heating the yarn for like 30 minutes with the multi nets, I did still see some color in the pot. Ironically, when I started heating it, more color came out in the pot than there was when from when I just had it sitting cold. And that didn't absorb with the heat. And so with some of my new decisions with blue, since I liked where the color was, I decided to remove it from the pot. Um, because it seems to me that sometimes when I let colors absorb slowly as they cool, that's the color that then comes out later on. And I think we might be good. I think we might be very good. Um, there was only the smallest amount of color that I saw come out. And given that we have 400 grams of yarn in here, that is great. It's hard for me to know. I suppose I could take a closer look at all the blue pigments, but what blues are bleeders and what aren't. But uh, I wonder if this new blue strategy will help. But anyway, I am going to finish rinsing out the soap, put this through my spin dryer, and well, we're gonna go dye some more. Uh, as, as much as I want dye baths to clear, sometimes if things aren't clearing after a reasonable amount of time, there could be a reason. And so it could be a reason to not try to exhaust the color completely, which is a new shift for my brain and this is my first time trying this and uh, if I notice the amount of color in the pot again when I'm dyeing more rounds then I absolutely will show that because I don't think I showed that this time but all right let's go dye up some more I'm getting set up to dye four skeins but I didn't want to show that as I was making stock solutions I started this yarn mop to sort of clean up any spills and I will be continuing to use this. I briefly heat set it for about five minutes. It has vinegar in it. And yeah, I'm gonna use it to mop things up. Even though right now I'm gonna, about to start working on 
four skeins. Um, I am using the same uh, proportion of water that I did with three skeins, but I am using more dye. Uh, so yeah, but I am very excited to see how this turns out using this DK yarn. As I mentioned, I have increased the amount of dye, but the proportion of dye to yarn is still the same. So I'm gonna start with 200 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of Baby Blue Eyes, dilute it more in water so we have a bigger volume to put all over the yarn, and then I will move into 200 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of Sapphire Blue, Again, distributing it all over another half of the skein. Finally, with, again, 200 milliliters of Sea Spray, also at 1%, I distributed that all over the yarn and then finished up using only 15 milliliters of a 1% stock of Indigo. Now, these blues are not extremely different. And the Sea Spray sometimes ends up looking a lot more blue then the tealish green, it's sort of moody. It depends on its mood a little bit. But by doing the whole technique this way, I am getting not only fairly reasonable coverage over the yarn, but we are still getting subtle hue shifts, which is really gonna let these multicolored neps sing throughout the yarn. Because if you look, especially when the bare yarn is wet, you can see, little bits of the pink and the green and the yellow go through all the strands, which gives this an additional richness, just like if you were to get a yarn that was a blend of different colors, so you'd see that heathering in there. And it makes it just really spectacular. Personally, right now, I can see a lot of variation in here, but I also know from the past ones, as we heat it up, some color comes out and goes back in. So I don't know, the final result may be even more even, but I really like this slightly, it's like blue with a hint of green, and I really, really love it. So now I am going to go ahead and transfer this to my dye pot. And now we're gonna add, maybe not all of the liquid. Oh gosh. Spilled a little bit, bring the yarn mop over to help soak that up. This guy is literally a mop today. Oh, there's plenty of space for it all. And before I start heat setting, I will raise and lower the yarn just to distribute there in the pot. I didn't use our yarn mop much this time, but I did use it to help soak up a few spills. And so before the next round, because I need to pre-soak yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and just steam set it for a little bit, but then I'm gonna squeeze out the liquid to then have it on hand to help wipe up any spills. But heat setting this in between means that the yarn has space to soak up that dye without it becoming like a, a sponge, a dirty sponge. I expect that we will see a variation in the amount of variation from batch to batch but that there should be, the, the skin should be a bit more similar within one, I mean, it's not even really a dye lot because there will be some differences, but with, with, between each batch. Uh, and I'm just, I'm really, really excited. It's nice to do something that still involves a lot of like hand work, but is overall more subtle. And I think that if I was doing this with just one, if I just pre-mixed all these colors together and then dyed it in one batch, there would be a lot more dark and light patches and less of the subtle, ooh, is this blue a little bit more green right there? So the, a little bit less of that, but I am very excited and I hope you are too. So let's go look at the finished dry yarn. It is now weeks later. The yarn has been dry for a while, but I'm finally ready for our conclusions. Okay, we have our test skein, our first batch, and then the second batch. And I'm still perplexed that this is so much less pigmented. The only thing I can think of is that was this early on, like was this an old dye stock, so maybe it was more pigmented. I feel like I was able to shift things as I moved on 
and so some of the later skeins felt more like this again although here you can see there's definitely some more tonal variation so I'm not completely sure what I can say is that here on the DK the differences in those blues and those very very subtle shifts are a bit more pronounced than it is on this fingering weight skein and again some of the DK weight skeins are st more subtle than this batch I think I adjusted the levels a bit and I do have some fingering weight ones that have a tiny bit more contrast as well but if you look at this fingering weight yarn in person you do see these really subtle differences in the blue where there's like a little bit more yellow here and here and it's a little deeper over there I intentionally was going for something so subtle because I wanted these multicolored neps to really shine I wanted this pop of color uh, from primarily the pink yellow and green neps the blue does not really stand out as much over here but I wanted those to be our star our confetti our celebration um, for the holiday season and so I think that's something else that's really really fun about this yarn base and so even here on the DK you can see some of the blue neps but it does blend in more I think that because the neps have so many different colors whatever color you do some of the neps are going to have contrast because when you have yellow pink and blue and then also green but when you have all those colors some of it is going to pop and I think that that is really really awesome with this base but especially just this contrast of the yellow with the blue and the pink with the blue it's mwah, amazing I have filmed a side-by-side -side with the Wool to Die For's white net base to look at how that compares to say a skein of Stroll at the same depth of shade. I have not done something similar with this particular yarn. I don't think that these were like the same amount of intensity from this sort of more test skein to the rest. We also have this really beautiful yarn mop. I am just really really happy. It's a really fun yarn and very much contrasts. I guess it's sibling skein. So here we have it. The first of two bonus colorways dyed up for Hanukkah 2021. I think twisted you can start to see a little bit more of that variation it's gonna be very subtle it should look great with all kinds of patterns and so as much as I love going wild and bold it's fun to try to do something more layered and soft and lower contrast I don't know if the difference in the twist influenced how some of the DK weight yarn took up color versus that fingering weight yarn. Because as I mentioned in my intro, the fingering weight yarn is two ply, the DK weight is four ply and has a much loftier spin and twist to it overall. So I don't know why it turned out so different because I did mix the dyes fresh and I did use the same proportion of dye that I had used previously. I even have notes in my diary keeping track of the changes I made between the first stage and the second. So the only thing that I can envision now is that maybe my dye stocks weren't that well mixed so when I poured off dye from the top some had settled down and if I didn't shake it up enough then I could have ended up with less pigment than I thought. But really I don't know and I'm grasping at straws a little bit here. <laughs> As for my decision to remove the yarn from the dye bath after 30 minutes, I filmed this around the same time or shortly after I did the ice dyeing where I had more color bleeding than I've had I think in just about any other video. And so that experience influenced this because once I let the color bleed out there, then removed the yarn and washed it, I got some improvement in the bleeding I was seeing with washing. But the yarn didn't bleed here so I think that I was uh, just reliving that experience and really wanted to avoid creating something that was going to bleed forever when I wanted to dye so many of them. So did I use a lot of colors and put a lot of effort into creating a fairly soft subtle colorway? Yes. Do I like the colors where we ended up? Also yes. <laughs> I am sure that there is a less complicated way that I could have played with this. But sometimes things are about the journey as much as what the final color is. And I really hope 
you enjoy where we ended up. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and there are still two more videos for the 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Tomorrow night, I will be dyeing a sparkle colorway, and I'm very excited to show you that one. And then we will have a vlog where I'll talk a little bit about everything that went into creating the series and my thoughts and concerns along the way. Normally, I try to film conclusions as soon as the yarn is dry. That way, the actual dyeing process and everything is really fresh in my mind, and it is a lot easier for me to remember details and uh, accurately talk about the project. Although sometimes I make mistakes, like when I call peacock blue sapphire blue about 20 times during the course of the video. So I'm amused that I noted that I did wait longer before filming the end of this. But in general, I try not to do that. But I did have, in between the, the dying and film, filming those conclusions, I did have a small wrist injury that meant that I needed to take a break from twisting yarn and try to rest my wrist as much as possible. But again, it is doing significantly, significantly better. <laughs> anyway, I don't currently have any more of this yarn base, but I love it so much that I have a feeling I will buy more in the future. So please let me know down in the comments below what types of techniques you would like to see me play with on this base. So far, I've tried to be relatively subtle, but I think that we could do something that is much more variegated and still give those neps a moment to shine and sing. But anyway, I'm curious to know what kinds of things you would like to see me try. I just really don't think I'm going to do speckles. I think that speckles would not do any favors to this yarn. Speckles would just compete with the naps. Unless it was black speckles, maybe. Do I need to try that? Hmm. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.